press and cameramen outside looking in. The wife and children of John James inside with him, but unable to see any way out of their dilemma. A time of agonizing indecision shared by those responsible for sorting it out. But was it really necessary to order up armored vehicles to inflate this relatively small civilian crisis into a military siege? Not easy to understand the logic behind depriving Mr. James and his family of food and sleep and then allowing relatives and friends to try to cajole him into submission by taking him food, water and cigarettes. Then, just as suddenly reversing the situation and forcibly preventing relatives approaching the cottage. One night, depriving the wretched family of their sleep, the next night, leaving them relatively undisturbed. of the incident is secondary to the tragic burden placed upon Mrs. James. Should she stay with her husband, possibly at the risk of her children, or should she bring them out and possibly leave him to take his own life? The siege of Weston under Redcastle will be remembered as one of the most extraordinary mixtures of paradox and pathos. Save up to sixpence on 20. That's the big news for smokers with the end of resale price maintenance. But there's no smoke without fire, and the small traders are pretty hot under the collar about it. Open seven days a week, they claim they give a better service to the public than supermarkets. But can they afford to cut prices? Talking of service and smoke, these chaps have a tradition combining both. Answering some 400,000 calls a year, Britain's firemen cope with all sorts of emergencies, most recently the big flood rescue operation in the south. But here at Battersea, the pumping was rather less serious, an attempt by London firemen to set an endurance record working a manual fire pump of the 1870s. Their target, to beat the 25-hour record set by the Hampshire Fire Brigade. The pump can deliver an 80-foot jet of water. The intake of the pumpers is pretty impressive too. While you're lubricating the men, don't forget the machine. And they made it. A new record of 30 hours. Congratulations. And while we're about it, a vote of thanks to all the firemen involved in that other pumping marathon following the recent floods. the 1968 Autocross Festival and the latest in high compression minis. Autocross is the newest thing in motorsport, a cross between cutting the grass and lapping Silverstone, it's held on any convenient piece of meadow. Racing against the clock, cars leave in pairs to give the drivers a greater sense of competition. One of the cheapest forms of motorsport, it could become quite a money spinner. This meeting in Middlesex raised two and a half thousand pounds in aid of the Save the Children Fund. Even if autocross is still in its infancy, its rewards seem quite sizable. The drophead MG dropped once too often. A wheel spin away in Belgium, they've also been cutting up the grass, this time in the more familiar sport of motocross. Britain was among seven nations competing for the International Cup of the Future to find the most promising young rider in Europe. All competitors are under 21. Detry of Belgium, number 26, was to take the individual trophy, but Britain's young riders are going great guns. Robertson, number four, and Hughes, number three, combining to give Britain the team prize. Splendid riding to complete a weekend, which also gave Britain the team championship in the World Speedway titles. We were at 
at Kempton Park to study form. In case you think we've got the fillies mixed up, I can assure you this is Kempton Park, and those diaphanous dollies are the curtain raiser to a special Ladies' Day fashion show. All the clothes feature the man-made Soflons fibre, and they seem to cover pretty well every occasion, dressy and otherwise. The idea is to promote Kempton Park into a rival to Epsom and Ascot. Modelling a trouser suit, Princess Elizabeth of Tora, and enjoying the show, Linda Barron. Well, now you've seen the girls, let's see the four-legged fillies racing in the Soflon Stakes. And it's Sandy Barclay on the favourite hill shade, taking a prize worth nearly £6,000. He beat Exchange and Grandpa's Legacy with Lester Piggott way back on Lallybella. Not surprising if somebody lost his shirt, but she seems to have lost her what's-its as well. <laughs> 